in March 2021, which is next month, we are going to have three by elections in this country. And those three by elections are going to determine the 2022 general election. We are going to have a by election in Machakos, senatorial election. We are going to have a by election on 4th in uh, Matung Matungu constituency and also in Kabuchai constituency. In Matungu constituency, Musalia Mudavadi must prove to Kenyans that is indeed the kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region. So that election in Matungu is going to be a do or die for Musalia Mudavadi. The previous member of parliament, the late Murunga, was elected on an ANC party ticket, but he shifted his allegiance to William Samai Ruto. And William Samai Ruto is also looking at the Matungu by election to prove a point that indeed he's made progress into the larger Western Kenya region. Because Kakamega determines the politics in the larger Western Kenya region. Raila Odinga is polling the party for Musalia Mudavadi. He's not supporting the ANC candidate. Instead, Raila Odinga is also sponsoring a candidate there. Will that candidate emerge victorious? But that's not important. The most important thing in Matungu is Musalia Mudavadi winning. Then in Kabuchai, Ford Kenya candidate died. And Moses Wetangula must prove to everybody that he's still the king when it comes to Western Kenya, particularly in Bungoma County. Remember, his party at some point was being taken away. He rushed to court and court saved him. Will his candidate emerge victorious? If his candidate is going to be defeated, then it's going to be a tall order for Moses Wetangula in terms of the larger Bungoma County politics. But this, the other group of William Samui Ruto's allies, the likes of Didamas Baraza, the, life, the likes of Dan Wanyama, the likes of, uh, of uh, Waluke, they must also prove that indeed they have sold William Samui Ruto to the ground. So it's also very important. But there's a by-election also in Machakos. The senatorial by-election. In Machakos, Kalozo Musioka must use that election to stamp his authority in Ukambani politics. But, but William Ruto's key point person, Johnson Mudama, is also baying for the blood of Kalonzo Musioka. In fact, Johnson Mudama has stated clearly that should he, should he lose that election, then he's going to leave politics. And I was watching a video of him yesterday addressing the press, claiming that the government is trying to rig the elections in favor of the wife. Remember, in uh, Machakos, Kalonzo Musioka sponsored Johnson Mudama's wife. For a long time, people believed that Mudama was the engine of uh, Wapia Party. So, but the, the time he fell out with the Kalonzo Musioka, he must also prove that indeed he was the financier of Kalonzo Musioka. And Kalonzo Musioka must also prove to Kenyans that he can move his political party forward without any input from Johnstone Mudama. But that's not the main issue. That's not the main issue. There is the element of Gideon Moy in all this. What role is Gideon Moy playing in all this? Let me take you through some events which took place some last week, some this week. Then you will understand the role Gideon Moy is going to play. On Thursday last week, that was on 11th, the Baringo County Assembly became the first county in the Republic of Kenya to reject the Building Bridges Initiative Bill. That was a huge blow to Gideon Moy. Most Kenyans had expected Baringo County, of all the counties in uh, the larger Rift Valley,
to vote yes to that document. And just like I op opined in one of the videos, William Ruto was not going to allow Gideon Moy to win in Baringo. So he lost in Baringo. Then we went to Nyachai's funeral. And during Nyachai's funeral, Gideon Moy and William Ruto spoke. And these two gentlemen went for each other's throat. Let me, I'm just looking for uh, what Gideon Moy said. Now, this is what Gideon Moy said. What I learned from Nyachai, you don't have to steal to be successful. You can create clean wealth. That statement by Gideon Moy was interpreted by many people to mean a jab at William Samuel Ruto. Because most people believe that William Ruto never made his money through clean way. Then when his turn to speak came, Ruto also fired some salvos. Now this is what Ruto said. Nyachai didn't just wait to be given wealth by his father, Chief Nyandusi. Through his hard work, he went out to look for his home. With a small portion mill and a bakery, he built a business empire. Again, that statement by William Samuel Ruto was interpreted to mean a jab at Gideon Moy. So today, Gideon Moy, together with Kalonzo Musyoka, Musalia Mdabadi, and Moses Wetangola, are in Matungu constituency campaigning for the ANC candidate. I don't know you by the color of the Tomorrow, the brigades will be leading to Mungoma County, Kabuchai constituency. To campaign for the Kabuchai, for the Ford Kenya's candidate for the Kabuchai by election. That tells you that these three individuals are up to something. Because I've always maintained that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything is normally designed in a way to achieve a specific political objectives. So in this video today, I want us to look at the latest strategies or the game plan of these three individuals but before we do that if you're watching this video for the first time please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you now let us get back to serious business what do you think is the game plan of these four gentlemen gideon moy kalonzo musioka Moses Wetangula and Musalia Mudabadi. What do you think is their game plan? In my considered opinion, these guys are out to achieve the fall. Number one, they want to show solidarity as a strategy to lock out William Samuel Ruto out of these three by elections. Remember in Matungu, Relo Dinga has a candidate. In Kabuchai, no candidate. In Machakos, no candidate. So basically, if Ray Lodinga didn't have a candidate in uh, Matungu, it would mean a simple thing that these guys would have been campaigning against William Samaruto. So in my considered opinion, because even Jubilee Party decided not to sponsor candidates in these particular by-elections, in Matungu, Jubilee Party is sponsoring, I mean, is supporting the, the ANC candidate. In Kabuchai, they're supporting the Fort Kenya candidate. And in uh, Machakos, they're supporting the other candidate. So basically, what these guys are doing, 
They're showing solidarity as a strategy to lock out William Samoy Ruto. Ruto winning all these seats would totally change the politics of this country. And these three gentlemen, these four gentlemen, have interest in 2022 general election. They want to prove points that they control their areas. So what do they do? They are in Kabucha, they are in Matungu today. So which means those Ford Kenya people, because the Ford Kenya candidate for the last election, Nabulingo, Nabulindo or Suju Nabulingo, is the ANC candidate today. He's, he was the Ford Kenya candidate. So it means if this guy is going to win, he's going to win because of the ANC support and also of the Ford Kenya support. And if Gideon Moy has support and Rusali, I mean, and Kanozo Musuka has support in Matungu, then that's going to be the case. The same to Kabuchai and the same to Machakos. Of course, in Machakos, I think Kalonzo Musioka is likely to have an easy ride in Machakos. The mere fact that William Ruto started engaging with Kalonzo Musioka, I think did not work well for them. And that's why, strategically, William Ruto retreated, retreated from attacking Kalonzo Musioka again. Because he was advised that the moment you start attacking Kalonzo Musioka, then the ground is now going to be hostile to our candidates. So they want to lock out William Samuel Ruto. Number two, their second strategy here, in my considered opinion, is that these guys are out to form or to create 2022 political formation. What do I mean? Kalonzo Wetangula and uh, Kalonzo Wetangula and uh, Mudavadi were NASA principles. According to them, Raila Odinga used his last bullet. So Raila Odinga ought not to be on the ballot. That's according to them. So these guys now are saying we are going to go to 2022 general election. We don't want Raila Odinga anywhere near us. So they want to form a, a, a formation. Gideon Moy, who has Kanu, is also eyeing the 2022 general election. Either as a presidential candidate or as a prime minister. Then which, which formation should he join? Jubilee party is already collapsing. Then the only option is for them to come together. Remember, this team is actually the face of Kanu. The only two gentlemen missing in this team to make Kanu complete, in my considered opinion, is William Ruto and President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta, if you were to ask me, would easily support either of these guys as a preferred presidential candidate. Even against William Samai Ruto. And if you are keen, Musalem Davadi was the first guy who organized a meeting for Gideon Moy and, and Musalem Davadi. Was it in Kakamega County? It was in Kakamega County, I remember so well. So that, that's the second thing. 2022 political formation. The third thing is the ability to deliver. Can they deliver the presidency is the question they are trying to answer here. Remember, I've always explained on this platform that around President Uru Kenyatta there are camps. There are those camps which believes Raila Odinga should be the presidential candidate. Then there's those groups that believes there's a need for a compromise candidate. And that compromise candidate can be Musalem Davadi, Gideon Moy, or even Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. But Mudavadi has a high upper hand there. Then there's the camp which believes that Ruto should be supported. Then there's the third camp, the fourth camp, which believes that one of them should be. I've always explained that very nicely on this channel. So the people who are pushing for Musalim Davadi, people who are pushing for Kanozo Musioka, and people who are pushing for Gideon Moy, are telling them one thing, that you guys, you need to go outside there and start campaigning so that you can be taken seriously and that's why they are now out there they want to prove a point that indeed they can deliver and lastly it could also be a strategy of these four gentlemen to walk out of the shadows of Raila Odinga and President Rukinata for a long time most people believed that Kalonzo, Mudavadi and Weta were actually walking in the shadows of Raila Odinga. That without Raila Odinga, these guys were nothing. 
that Raila Odinga was carrying them on his back. What about Gideon Moy? Most people believed Gideon Moy was waiting to be given, waiting for President Ruk Kenyatta to give him. So Gideon Moy has decided, okay, let me go outside there. If you ask me of all these candidates, Gideon Moy has done more fantastic jobs when it comes to reaching out, compared to Mudavadi, compared to Weta, of course Weta is not serious, and compared to Kalonzo Musyoka. Now they, they, are, they want to prove a point that indeed we can be ourselves. I can run as a, a successful campaign for my candidate without Raila. I can run for the presidency without Raila Odinga. I don't know what you think, but those are my tech. If you're watching this video again for the first time, please take a second or two, click subscribe button. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Today, I just applied for the silver play button. They sent me the code, so which means in the next three or four weeks, we should be having it right here. It's only possible because of your support. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day.